It worked. Hey, it worked. <laughs> What's happening? Well, I know, but this is new for me too. I'm like, this is new, so. <laughs> I got so nervous. I was like, I'm positive I'm gonna mess this up. It's okay. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> you're, yeah, yeah, you're, you're all good. Well, well thank you so much for, for doing this, Sophia. I really appreciate it. For those of you that don't know, uh, Sophia Hasmick is an amazing actress. She was in uh, Bad Samaritan. And then now she's in a film called All the Bright Places on Netflix right now. So if you haven't watched it, you guys need to check it out. I, I watched it and I was like, we need more films with a message like this. Um, yeah. I think it is so important. But before we, we, we dive into the film, I wanted to... Um, to talk about your, you know, there, there's two things I was thinking of, of, of around this quarantine. What have been your, I would say your morning, do you have any morning rituals or anything you do in the morning um, that's been something that's yeah. been consistent <laughs> I over the... I, I had to like officially stop checking the news every morning because I realized that that was really affecting me um, in a different in a different way. It's always great to be informed, but I think right off the bat, it's sort of a hard thing to digest. To digest. Um, but as lame as it sounds, I have been texting and calling my mom. <laughs> Wonderful. It's, we've like, I have hated uh, FaceTime forever. Like you couldn't get me to get on it for any reason. Um, just because it makes me feel like I miss the other person uh, so much more. Um, having like all that distance in between, but it's been really nice just sort of like propping the phone up and she makes a coffee and I make a coffee and we sort of sit there and have a coffee, whether in silence or whatever it is, but it just sort of like sets the tone for the day. It's just nice and grounding and it feels like you're around love, you know? Yeah, definitely. Because you haven't, I'm sure you haven't seen your mom in a while. Then anybody yeah, in quarantine, so. I have finally convinced this very strong-willed woman to let me do her groceries for her. Good. Okay, good. <laughs> good. She's just like, it's okay. I'll wear a mask. I'll wear. I was like, no, wow. absolutely not. Um, she. I always, you know, say that she's very young. I'm always like, oh, you're so young. You're so young. And it's probably the first yeah. time in her entire life that I've ever been like, you know what, maybe like you're getting yeah. your age, we need to take care of some stuff. Right. So right. yeah, so it's, it's well, definitely been hard. Yeah, definitely been hard, but I'm happy that you've been able to connect with your mom and, um, and yeah, in, in that type of way, as much as we're not able to hang with, with family. Yeah. But I wanted to, to start from the beginning, you know, when did you decide like, hey, I want to, I want to act, I want to do this thing? Um. Probably, I did one play in high school, my last year of high school, um, and it really sort of like changed, uh, it, I know it sounds cliche, but it really did sort of change my life and it opened my eyes um, in such a profound way. I fell in love with it immediately, but I didn't really understand um, immediately why I loved it until maybe even just like a few years ago. Um, and that play um, got selected to go perform in Scotland for the Fringe Festival over there. And it was so hard to convince my parents to let me go. Um, and I knew like in between like <laughs> breaths, like between crying and sort of begging them like, please, this is it. Like, I'll, I won't talk about acting ever again if you just let me do this. Um, and they let me go. And after that, when I'd realized I had sort of said, okay, I won't do it anymore. I missed it so much. I didn't do it for an entire year until my second year of college. And I was like, no, this is definitely, um, this is definitely where I'm supposed to be. It was like a home. Right. It felt like sacred, like church in a sense. It was just, right. you know, you felt safe there. And even if you were vulnerable, you felt somehow safe in that vulnerability that right. if you fell, somebody would catch you. And it just felt like such community. And, you know, who doesn't want that every day? Right. Most definitely. Well, I mean, I know that it, it I'm sure it took you a while to actually get in films because it takes a lot of, you know, yeah. hard, hard work. And a lot of people have these dreams of being in film or just not even acting, but doing something um, that pertains to, you know, who they are and what, they're, what their calling is. But yeah. how does it feel to actually have a film in Netflix right now? Like, how does that feel, feel like? This... I, I, I 
<laughs> as you can tell from my face. Um, it feels really surreal. Um, I honestly didn't even believe it was happening, even while we were shooting. Um, I was like, nah, you know, like the other shoe is going to drop and I'm going to wake up and we're going to realize this was all a dream. And, right. <laughs> and then we're going to like, just start my day all over again. But it was, um, it's definitely an, an incredible experience. And I I feel like it's going to stick with me for a very long time, especially with how, um, especially with the message of the film, especially with all the like amazing talent in the film and how everybody was so quick to become this like family unit. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really, uh, yeah, I have, I have nothing but incredible words to say about that experience. It was just so surreal, but you know, I mean, um, film and like that, that's, type of acting I mean acting in general you can always find sort of a an avenue and like a voice for yourself to express your creativity um it's not just to say like oh if I don't do film and if I don't do tv if I don't do this it's like you have to constantly be you know creating and keeping your mind open it's like a muscle like anything else yeah you know yeah definitely and how how like what has the response been like once the film came out what was the response like the response of, of the film itself? Yeah, yeah, the film itself, yeah. I, I mean, there were a lot of, I mean, Jennifer Niven did such an amazing job with this book um, because it, it touches on this, like, the subject of mental health and, and, you know, being vocal, being there, trying to help somebody, trying to figure out your life. And I think that that resonates for so many people. Um, you know, there were a lot of, uh, uh, for the film, like, thank yous, and this was so eye opening, and, and I really relate to this. And I think that is so important, especially, um, you know, where we are right now, it's, it's hard to find a dialogue to um, express the need for help, or to feel like, to feel like you are less than And or you're a small person if you ask somebody for help if you say you know what I'm not feeling right today I don't know why I'm not feeling right but like this is what's going on in my head um, mm -hmm. and more often than not like when you open your mouth and you e express your emotions and your feelings the person next to you is going to have um, is going to most likely have gone or is going through the same thing um, so I think the response for the film was just it was a, a there's a lot of gratitude, I think, around it, because it's mm. not something that's um, uh, talked about um, as often as it should, really. Right, definitely. And I'm, and I'm bad with summarizing films. Can you, can you summarize all the bright places for those who haven't watched? Don't tell everything, but just a little bit, <laughs> like, in a, in a... You know, it's so funny yeah. that you're like, I'm yeah. really bad at summarizing things, because in my mind, I'm like, I'm so bad <laughs> you at, okay. at summarizing things. Right. Like, when I told my mom I got cast in it, she was like, what is it about? And I was like, well, it's based off a book. Right. And... <laughs> you don't want to say all of it. Right, and, okay. Um, you know, it's... it's. Oh God, how would I summarize this? <laughs> I'm intelligent. I don't really know what I can. Right. It's okay. Um, it's, it's... I don't know. It's, it's like this very touching story about, um, like, uh, a young man named Theodore Finch who is... Uh, going through a hard time in his life and has been through so much and, you know, years before and his growing up and he meets a girl, Violet Markey, um, and they sort of like go through this journey together of understanding like what it means to fit in, what it means to be accepted, what it is, you know, what it is, what it means to, you know, st stand out and sort of like how um, in my mind, I was like, how we can sort of help each other and be a voice for one another and be able to lean on one another and not feel judged. Um, but it's, it's mm. really, yeah, it's really moving. So I don't think that really did the job. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, 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 I think, no, no, you did, you did. You did. And they're going to watch it. Now they're going to say, you know what? To explain, I, yeah, I got to go see it. She's like, <laughs> so, she explained it so poorly. We have to figure out what no. this is. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's, it's great. And in, in, in your character, Brenda, you play, you know, Finch is uh, like best friend, would you say? Like you, you guys are best friends? Yeah, or well, there's like a, a group of us. It's Brenda and Charlie and Finch. Yeah. It's, 
it's so cool. Um, yeah, playing friends. Yeah. You know? Being friends. Yeah. Yeah, and I wanted to ask what, I, I, I would say, what character did you relate to the most out of all those characters? Which one were you like? Even though you played Brenda, was there any other character that you really related to? I loved Brenda from the minute. Mm, okay. From the minute. It was so crazy. Um, I was, yeah, I was sent the script to the audition and I read through it and I was like, this girl is sort of everything that I wish that I was at that age. Mm, speak like, on that. She is just, um, my high school experience and hers was, they're so different. Um, okay. In that, like, I I did everything I, can, I could to make myself, like, as small as possible to sort of just, like, fit in um, and, like, you know, be around but not really be, like, seen. I really didn't talk much. I didn't really have, like, a huge personality. Um, because I was always so afraid of fitting in, of not, of so afraid of not fitting in, I should say, that I really tried to make myself like as small as possible. Um, I, it's so interesting though, because all of my girlfriends from high school that I was very close with, like, we're still such good friends and we see each other as often as we can. And, um, you know, the being in quarantine has really upped our FaceTiming game, but I was very Definitely. quiet. And reading that script and then reading Jennifer's book, I was like, oh, my God, Brenda says what she means. She says when it comes into her mind, she is like this beautiful combination of being very like out there and loud. But, you know, with like a, a little bit of like a filter on her, you know, she's not mean, but she's she's smart and she's just very I was reading it. And I was like, dang, yeah, yeah I wish I uh... could be her. I wish wow. I could go back in time and be like, you know what? Yeah, stand up for yourself. If you like something, then say you right. like it. Um, right. Don't be afraid that, you know, your friend's not going to like it. And I, she's not going to want to be friends with you, which is kind right. of how I did it in a weird mm -hmm. way. Um, but yeah, no, Brenda was like from the get you gotcha. I was like, this is my girl. I really hope this works out. <laughs> Definitely. Well, well, speaking of, like you just said, you know, um, in school, you had trouble with fitting in and struggling with becoming, you know, who you're supposed to be. And I think that's sort of like the film in a way, but then you recently posted something on Instagram where you're really vulnerable talking about how now you are essentially coming into yourself or being comfortable with being who you are. So when did you get to that place? Um, it wasn't until recently. Um, I have always felt, um, just like this like need, like everybody has that need to sort of like prove themselves to a certain degree. Um, and it's so easy to fall into kind of like a, a trap of your own making. Um, and it wasn't until probably a, a few years ago, maybe I'm not even sure like what clicked, but um, I just, I think I got so tired I think I really got so tired of sort of mapping out every single thing that I say, you know, n nobody should be offensive first and foremost, but like, you know, just trying, I was just trying so hard to be accepted or, or I was giving so much of my energy to, did I make a really good impression? Like, or, you know, did I say that wrong? Was that weird? Like all these things. And, um, and I, I could, you can't, you can't sustain that. It's not something that you can go through life, like sitting there and like thinking about every single word that comes out of your mouth, you know, um, and how you look. And there are things about me that like, I cannot change. You know, I am very Armenian. You know, I, I, I just, I have always battled with the idea of like, oh, you look different. Like different is not a good thing. Mm. Um, so I was trying to find, um, ways to sort of like mask myself and mm -hmm. it wasn't until it wasn't until recently where I was just really like so proud of being who I was and being like you know what like yeah I am weird I'm not going to sort of like apologize for you know being who I am I'm gonna strive to become a better person every day but I'm not going to um, be angry at myself for not being somebody else right you know mm -hmm. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's really, really it hard. It is. 
Uh, it is because we want to fit in. You're right. Yeah, you know, and of course we want to fit in, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I've realized that since I've stopped trying to force myself into situations or trying to, to, to sort of stop forcing friendships and connections and relationships and all that stuff, like the people who I am still so close with and I become closer with, mm -hmm. uh, know me for who exactly, like who I am exactly. And mm -hmm. I know them. And we sort of mesh in that sort of way where I'm like, oh, once I drop all these, like, she like the shield and this armor and everything, you become, yeah. uh, you find your, your mates, you know, yeah. you find yeah. your true ride or dies or like, yeah, it's just her. She's kind of crazy. Like, you know, the same <laughs> way I'm like, yeah, like bring her over. It's going to be a really good time. Like she'll be wild, but it's, you know, you get attracted to those kinds of personalities and you're like, oh, that's what I see in myself that I hated so much. If that's what that is, I want to explore mm -hmm. who I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how has your life changed now that you're living in your truth, you would say? Um, I'm a lot less tired. <laughs> mm, good. Wow. I am a lot. I am just, I think I, yeah, I think, I think because I'm not sort of putting this weird pressure on myself constantly, um, I... I enjoy, I enjoy so many things. I enjoy going out a lot more. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I enjoy seeing friends. I enjoy having conversations because I'm not like, okay, what do I say? What do I do? What should I wear? What's going on? Like all this stuff that sort of in, inhibited me before. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's been like, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I can just wake up and, and do my thing. Yeah. And if people like it, then that's fine. And if they don't, like that's, that's not on me, you know? Right. You know, I don't think that Definitely. everybody should be agreeable to every single mm -hmm. person. Um, that's just madness. <laughs> right. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> right. And, and you mentioned as we were, we were, we were chatting that you are a first generation, uh, you said um, uh, first generation American from Armenia, correct? Yes. And, and, and I wanted to know, like, to me, that seems like, I don't know if it's true or not, but maybe there could be pressure that comes with that maybe of like, since you're like the first here, it's like you have pressure to be successful or, you know, so I wanted to know like, how did you, you know, manage, if there was any pressure, how did you manage that pressure without turning that into anxiety? Oh, no, that was anxiety for sure. <laughs> that was mm. anxiety. That was All right, we're breaking up. No worry. I think we're breaking up on your end. No worries. Okay, that was ahead. hilarious. Sorry. Okay, I, we're breaking up. <laughs> Sorry, the internet no, was kind of no. acting up. My phone was like, you've been on Instagram for more than 45 minutes. Do you want to continue? <laughs> it was like, stop. Okay. Like, you okay. reached your like, time limit. I was like, well, oh, I ignore for today. Um, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> there, is a, there, there was a lot of pressure. There was a lot of anxiety. And, you know, I think that's what I was like touching back on also. It's like you have to release that because it was putting mm -hmm. a strain on my family. It was putting a strain on on everybody, you know, this need to this constant need to be like, I need to succeed, I need to be successful, I need to make everybody proud. I'm like, you know what? Are you proud? Like, am I proud? Mm. If I'm proud, I feel like that should be enough. If I'm proud, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have the confidence to show other people, like, listen, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about me. I will figure it out and um, it is hard because, you know, my mom, my mom came over here, uh, she studied chemistry in Armenia and she was a chemist and she came here and, um, she started to study like, uh, computer programming and she became like a systems analyst. And my dad was, um, an engineer in Armenia and came over here and could not find work. And there was a little bit of a language barrier. And I will never forget, like my mom told me she, um, he was passing out pizza flyers door to door. Like this man came here with an wow. education, couldn't find work, was not too proud to be like, you know what, I need to make my, I need to do something. I need to have a job. Um, and really fought his way through that. Started, you know, handing out pizza flyers and then was a truck driver and now has like a tiny, it's like a small family owned little trucking business. You know, it's not being glamorous, but like, no, it's that's been, amazing. Yeah, it's been wow. like this example for me where, you know, we don't agree on everything all the time, but I have this right. immense level of respect for him because it shows you what you can do 
with nothing and mm -hmm. all the determination and mm -hmm. you know having that fight and that perseverance and it was really difficult to be like oh well i i, I want to be an actor like i had figure skated right. for 13 years and what? that didn't pan out yeah that was like a I different was, lifetime you were a figure skater i was a figure mm. skater um wow. i did a little, bit of, a little bit of ballet um wow. yeah so i mean that yeah. transition when that stopped everything sort of turned into like okay we're gonna focus on academia we're gonna make sure you mm -hmm. get into a good uc school we're gonna get you like a very stable uh major so you can get that career so you can have the stability so you can have the money so you can have everything and that was like what success okay. meant and Got it. it was so hard my second year at university uh to be like you know what i i can't like i was carrying so much uh, like mm -hmm. depression around with me and i didn't mm -hmm. have the words to like verbalize what that feeling was because i wasn't acting and mm -hmm. it was so hard to explain to them like listen, I just got into their BFA program. I want to continue doing this. And it was such a separate dream from, you know, my father's and my mother's and they're all very, so supportive. But I mean, there was a moment of like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, which I mean, I can understand, you know? Um, but it really, it does have this like huge pressure to be like, oh my God, you know, my parents did this, like, you know, they worked really hard, you know, sent me to good schools, made sure I was training, took care of my brother, you know, you know, wow. like brought my other family over from Armenia, like all this stuff. And wow. I'm sitting here being like, yeah, and I'll just I'll be an actor. And they were like, what's going on? Yeah, but, yeah. You know, you have to follow your, you have to follow your truth. You have to, right. you, at some point you have to be like, no, listen, this is my life. And I appreciate everything that you've done for me. And mm -hmm. I tell my family all the time, like, I'm going to continue to do everything I can to know that I can, I will find a level of success, which for me is mainly just having the opportunity to act, whether that means going to class, whether that, like, whatever that means, just mm -hmm. having that outlet, like finding success and the happiness which then like sort of translates to um, sort of translates to them. Like I am okay. Like you did a good job. Like it's yeah. no, this has nothing to do with your parenting or whatever it was. Like, this is just what I have to do. So it's uh, it definitely did, a lot of pressure. Yeah. How did you get the courage though to do that? Cause there's a lot of kids or people that have that their parents want them to do this and they're afraid to do what they really wanted. So how did you get that courage to just say, Hey, whatever. I'm going to follow my heart or. Oh yeah. man. Um, I think I was, I think I was so uh, determined and I think my need to act, to study it um, sort of overpowered any other fear. I just really needed it. And at that point I was convinced and even now, like I'm convinced, like I need it almost like, as much as I need air. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. Wow. And so I, it wasn't so much that I had to like build myself up to let them know. It was more like I, if I didn't do it, there was no alternative. I, no plan B. There was no plan B. Like I didn't, you know, I, I, in, in my mind, I was going for every scenario of like, well, I could tell them like I'm in a double major or whatever it is, but I really wanted to devote like everything I had to this. Um, you know, I, yeah, it wasn't so much, yeah, confidence or courage. It was more just like, I saw, I need it. I need it. Whatever it is, I just need what it gives me. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, and also like, it I love that, but I think that is courage too. I think that is courage. <laughs> that takes a lot. Yeah. So. I mean, it was, it was just like an understanding and, and knowing that, yeah. yeah, like, you know, my dad disapproved of it and he still really doesn't get it so god bless wow. him for keeping me humble like yeah you know yeah, like, humble it really Humility. is you know like i and it comes from him it comes from fear you know it's a fear of mm. you know not being able to fully protect your child you know what i mean and any other profession you can easily say like one plus two is three 
And Definitely. in this profession, it's so hard to make heads or tails of it that like, there is no formula. There really is no, no formula. formula. <laughs> no formula. There's nope. nothing. You know, it's not like a set of rules. Like if you follow this, if you take these classes, if you do this stuff, it's not like that, you know? Nope. Um, and I think that's so scary for parents to be like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you're talented. People like yep. it. It's great. But yep. like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? It's not yeah. like a set thing like everybody else is doing. Yeah. True. It's so not set. But I think that like, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world like mm -hmm. anything in the world. I have a lot of my girlfriends who have, you know, who graduated with the same major that um, I had the year prior. I went, I g was a pre-business economics major. And a lot of my girlfriends who stuck with it, you know, mm -hmm. have um, this sort of, this like, um, like the word is exa ex escaping me right now. Um, they have kind of like this, this, idea of success that I'm sure is like what my uh, what a lot of first generation kids parents think is success. It's like they have mm -hmm. the house, they have the job, yep. they have the yep. cars, they have all these things. And I, I see that and I admire it. And it's so much work that goes into it. And Definitely. I just I looking at it now, I'm like, that's that couldn't have been my life. That really mm. couldn't have been my life. I would. It's I would much rather like struggle and figure it out and fall and, you know, do all this, go through whatever the like happiness, the highs, the lows, because that in itself is, um, breathes like life to me. Like it just feels right. like I'm living. It feels like I'm doing what I want to be doing. You're calling, you're, you're, yeah. yeah, you're following your calling instead of following material and like yeah. the success of this, you're following your purpose. Yeah, it's, hmm. a, you know, I, I feel like everybody sort of, everybody has a purpose. Everybody has that thing that really excites them. And, and when you stop doing that, you sort of, for me, at least, it feels like I'm not living, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. hundred percent. Yeah. So. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, you're right. I mean, look where we're at now. I mean, everything's closed. I mean, now is the time that we all are self-reflecting on life. But what yeah. does all this really mean? So I think you're yeah. right. Following your purpose is the only thing that matters. Yeah. You know, what does this really mean is such a, like a, it's such a perfect <laughs> question. I'm sure <laughs> everybody's thinking that really like, what is my life? What did I plan for? Because all the plans are like thrown out the window. They're just like, it's, it's, you kind of just have to figure out like, you know, who are you? It's such a, like a self like reflecting time, especially, um, and there's something so interesting about like somehow simultaneously like feeling small and um, big at the same time. I don't, that doesn't make right. any sense, but it's like you realize Explain that, like, that. you're so yeah. small in the universe. Like you're mm -hmm. just this like mm -hmm. small thing. There are bigger things happening around you. So like every single problem that like you've had that you've blown completely out of proportion, um, it's, it's not as, uh, devastating. It's not as, you know, you sort of your eyes open up and you're like, oh man, like in the grand scheme of things, like that really wasn't as big as I thought it was. And like right. life moves on and it moves forward. And then there's mm -hmm. also, you kind of feel like uh, a responsibility towards everybody else that you are living with on this earth. You know, it's, mm -hmm. so I think that's like such a weird thing that I've been like sort of thinking about. I'm like, man, how can we be so small and so big at the same time? Yeah. Like, right. you know, the way we act right now, you know, going to the grocery store, going outside or going on walk, like affects yeah. so many people. So it's this weird sort of like balance where I'm like, oh man, like this is sort of, this is sort of a time for everybody to realize, you know what, like put your stuff aside and, and, and know that you are taking care of your neighbors you're taking care of your family you're taking care of people you don't even know but at the same time realizing that like your stress of of like you know being in a house or being whatever it like doesn't overcome like the stress of like the entire like <laughs> state of the universe right now like right. everybody is hurting and it's what we do with that hurt i think sets us apart mm -hmm. in a way. definitely and as as everything is 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 closed right now, everything is like you just said. This is the perfect time to, to to stop and reflect on life. I think that's so important. What are you most looking forward to doing once we're you know able to go outside again and 
enjoy life. Oh my God. Hug my brother. <laughs> wow. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Hug my brother. It's yeah. So, it's so ridiculous. I have literally, that is like the only thing that I have been so like really, really affected by. I was like, oh my God, wow. I cannot hug this little muffin. It's just the <laughs> two of us. He, okay. He's, he's younger than me by like two and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, he has Down syndrome. So we, he's just like, he oozes blood. Like he oozes, mm -hmm. he oozes blood because my mind is over. He oozes love. He wow. Like, wow. is just, every time you see him, he always asks like for bachiks, which is Armenian for kisses. He asks oh. for hugs and he asks for kisses and he's just so happy and he has this amazing oh. outlook on life and like there's never a bad day for him. He's just so, I mean, he grounds me. He, he really wow. does. And he has this infectious smile like I've never seen. Mm -hmm. um, and he's so funny and he's so smart and I literally am just so excited to hug yeah. my brother. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> no, I love it. No, it's I, so bad. <laughs> no, I love it. That's no, no. This is um, it's beautiful. That's all I can say. Is this that's beautiful? That's touching. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he mm -hmm. makes it so easy for 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 me to love him. How does he but keep I, you grounded? How does he keep you grounded? You said he keeps you grounded. Just well, I. I mean, it's, it's sort of like, he, he does keep my feet on the ground. I, mm -hmm. I think that being around him uh, sort of alleviates all of my stress. Mm -hmm. Because 24 hours a day, this man is living his truth. He mm -hmm. is not embarrassed about anything. Uh, mm. In fact, when I go out with him, I get yeah. to act like a child and I get to sort of live out like mm. um, this part of me that I tried to suppress for so long when I was growing up mm -hmm. and being around him and us like hanging out together. It's sort of I am like alleviated all, of all of that. Like he makes it so easy to enjoy life because mm -hmm. he enjoys it so fully and you can see that on his face and you can see how excited he gets over the small things and yeah um, you know I I think that I think a lot of people like are I mean I shouldn't say a lot of people I mean I'm sure we all notice it from time to time but it's so easy to forget that like there are so many things that we take for granted definitely and he is a constant reminder to me that like no like enjoy the sun enjoy the rain enjoy everything yeah. enjoy this walk like enjoy this coffee like yeah. he'll sit there and like drink a a cup of hot chocolate and it'll for mm -hmm. him the way he like makes little like sounds and uhs and oohs and things like you would think it was like the most magical cup of hot chocolate because he's like mm -hmm. fully just enjoying every small thing yeah so yeah. anytime I'm having a bad day or whatever it is and I find myself about to like jump into that hole of like woe is me and like uh, mm -hmm. this is you know like you know, we all fall into those things. We're like, why does this happen to me? How come I don't have, how come I like yeah. all these like ridiculous things? Like I quickly yeah. get on the phone with him and it's just maybe like 15 minutes of us making mm -hmm. funny little sounds at each other. Like talking yeah. for a second about real things. Like how was your day? How's everything going? And then we'll just start right. giggling and making, you know, weird little sounds. And I'm like, yep, this is so much better than anything ever. Like it just it makes me feel like, okay, like life is about enjoying it. It's not like, yeah. don't stress yourself out too much. So he's right. so perfect at, at basically Beautiful. telling me to calm down. <laughs> mm -hmm. And my, my girlfriend was just, she said a comment, she, she said here, she said, that's probably where she got the curse to be yourself. Or, you know, maybe there's something yeah. that it could be in your life that you didn't even know, but you're like, yeah. he's being here. I, I got, and maybe that really, Helped yeah, you in a way. That's that is, yeah, that is probably one hundred percent true. Um, mm. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, because I when I'm with wow. him, it's so much easier to do that. You know, okay, because it's like it's yeah. you know you follow by example. I'm like this kid does not yeah. care. He's going around. He's like 
to be so charming just by being wow. yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I probably did get that courage from him for sure. It's so funny because, you know, he's one of my, he's somebody that I really look up to because of that. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say it, it's like, I feel like it, I, I truly, truly mean it. If I could, you know, be even like, if I can see the world like, like one one hundredth of the mm. like percent that he sees it, I yeah. think I would be a better person for it. Truly. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. Just to see the little things in life, just to yeah. be yourself, not to yeah. be afraid. I yeah, think you're right. Yeah. At the end of the day, like judgment or not, you're gonna feel a lot better being who you are. Like you're gonna go to sleep a lot better. You're gonna just walk around with this like it's scary at first but then you kind of it, it gives you a, a little bit of energy where you're kind of like yeah. it you, you get pepped up by it you're like yeah like that was 100 percent me and it's okay like it's totally fine to be 100 percent right. you and to be loud and to be weird or to be quiet like whatever you want to do that's great you know right. More often than not, mm -hmm. somebody's going to be watching you being like, dang, I wish I could do that. Like, I wish I could true. You know, speak the truth. So it's true. Why not be that person? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, Sophia, thank you so much for sharing your truth with yeah. all of us. Um, yeah. I think we've learned a lot from this that people who are watching, because I think this is really your first real, not your real first interview, but, you know, um, in some Sir, cases, to what you you're sharing, <laughs> I might be, this might be what he, so uh, from years to come, I think they're going to really, you know, as they're seeing all your other interviews with movies, I think this is going to be great for them to just get to know who you are and yeah. where that passion comes from. And so, um, yeah, I appreciate you. For those of you that are watching, please check out her new film, All the Bright Places, on Netflix right now. Thank it's so you. touching and so amazing. And Sophia will just continue to, to stay in touch. Yes. Um, oh, my I, God. I yeah. love your messages of positivity. Oh, I just like, Thank you. I was so, so excited to do this. I think what you're doing is so special and so important. And I'm just so happy to be a part of it. So really, well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just, it's, it's a, you know, like I said, we all have gifts and different things we're doing. So it, it goes hand in, hand in hand. So I really appreciate you too as well. And I look forward to actually when this is finished, meeting you in person. So yes. That would oh be great. Oh, my gosh. We'll get that on the books as soon as we figure out what's going on. <laughs> <laughs>